Tonight, once again, we here to discuss with you the real practical application of walking in the school of the Spirit. And, and I'm going to say this. First of all, y you can't minister without the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Not in any way. It, it you know... I don't care whether it's, I don't care whether you're talking one-on-one, -on -one, whether you're preaching a sermon, teaching a class, doing, worshiping, doing music, praying, whatever. It, it, the anointing is absolutely essential. It, it is by the means of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, that we offer everything to the Lord that is acceptable. Let me give you an example. If, a, if an offering was going to be offered unto the Lord, it had to be turned into smoke. The fire of God had to be lit upon that offering for that offering to ever be a part of worship. I hope you can understand that. That is just really that simple. The Lord has come and baptized. I want you to listen very careful to me because you hear you might as well pay as much attention as you possibly can because otherwise you're not going to get this. And let me say this. The more, the more time that you sit and listen to something like this, the more opportunities that you have, but you don't take advantage of them, the more likely you will never take advantage of them. And you don't want to run that risk. And I say that underscoring the fact that you better start doing what we're describing to you by the Holy Ghost now, not later. If you're waiting for another day, that day probably won't come. In fact, you fortify yourself against that day. God is going to move where there is brokenness and where there is humility. And I'm going to tell you, the chief characteristic of that is a willingness to do it immediately. Prompt obedience. Every parent loves prompt obedience in their children. It, there, it just makes a whole different realm of living. It's a different world when your children are prompt to obey. You're going to have to understand that this is absolutely essential. It's non-negotiable. There isn't two pathways to God. There's not plan A, plan B, and plan C, and you're on plan C or plan B. There's plan A, there's one plan, and only one plan. And I, you know, I think one of the most important things for people to recognize is you have a whole array, and literally I could use the word properly, plethora of attitudes, dispositions, thoughts, things going on in your life continually that are just nothing but you. It's nothing but the self realm. And unless you're willing to do what the Lord Jesus Christ said to do and turn yourself over to the mastery of the Holy Spirit, that is the way you're going to live your life and that's how you're going to function. Now, in the natural world, that's perfectly fine. And then the more disciplined you are with that in, in, the, in the right uh, types of environments, then maybe that dictates your success or your failure. But in the kingdom of God, it's completely and entirely irrelevant. Jesus Christ is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire. And, he's, and those two things... And I, I, I want to personify, I, I would say I could personify one and make the other a thing. But I'm going to say it, those two things, those two dimensions, Holy Ghost and fire, are actually the same thing. Just as the fire of God would come upon an offering, Elijah said, let, let the God who answers by fire, let him be God. And God sent fire down out of heaven and baptized that offering so much so that it licked up the water around the offering is the same God and the same power of the Holy Ghost that has come to baptize you and me in a similar way for a similar result. People just think, wow, man, wouldn't it be wonderful if I could be like Elijah and call down fire out of heaven. You can participate with the fire that has come down out of heaven and actually benefit far greater in its impact than what happened with Elijah on that day. To be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire is something that is continual. You know, that changes the dimension of everything about your life. If you just are stuck in a Pentecostal expression of what many people call tongues, 
and it doesn't promote or bring you into a place where the holy dispositions of God begin to impact you, there's one of two things. Either you've got a wrong expression, you have a religious expression, or you did not stay with this activity of the Holy Ghost long enough to have a breakthrough. I can give you a lot of different di uh, descriptions of this. I want to do that tonight, but I just want you to understand tongues were given to us in the school of the Spirit for us to hook up with the Holy Ghost. It is the first expression of baptism. We call it the entrance a gift. It must excel. It will excel unto a different attitude, a different disposition, a different state of mind, if you would. But you and I, we could be willing to participate with these things of God. I think some people think that the Lord baptizes with the Holy Ghost and fire one time and then that's it. And they want to talk about that one time. It's fun for you to talk about the first time you were baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, but you ought to be being baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire all the time. And that's the same as what Paul said, be, being filled with the Spirit or being continually filled with the, the Spirit. We know that being filled with the Spirit and being baptized in the Spirit are equivalent. And I can help you understand that just real quickly, just by simply saying that Jesus said in Acts 1.5, you should be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire not many days from now. And then when, they were, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all gathered together in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and clothing tongues of fire rested upon each one of them, and they were filled with the Spirit. And that first establishes the equivalence of what it means to be baptized in the Spirit and what it means to be filled in the Spirit. Now, this is something that has to happen every day. Let me, let me give an, another example. Just being in the school of the Spirit, of learning total dependency upon the Holy Ghost. He, he is real. He wants, he, he wants to become real to you. He is not only in us, but He is with us. You should be able to feel anything that is in you, okay? You should somehow be able to feel. You might have to get a little close, uh, you know, to start feeling your heart beat, you know. You might have to get real quiet. And then, of course, there's some extra, you know, there's some devices to help you feel, listen to your heart and, and listen, you know, to your insides. And, but even more so than that, attitudes, emotions, all these various different feelings that you live off of. I'm going to just tell you right now, people don't realize it, but you live off your feelings. You are whatever you feel. You act like whatever you feel. And I'd get tired of that real quickly if I were you. I'd say, forget about this. I'm going to learn to do what Jesus said. He said, if you want to follow me, you must deny yourself. Now, you're going to have to understand that. Take up your cross and follow me. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. This is what Jesus said. He made it very specific in what it is he said. He modeled for us exactly what it means to take up our cross. It's doing the will of the Father. It's living for Father's purposes, not for our own, okay? And so I, I, we've got to understand that these bad attitudes, that these, that these uh, melancholy state uh, uh, dispositions really are demonic in many ways. They are influenced by the spirit of the world, the, spirit, the atmosphere of the world. And at best, they're influenced by the cares of this life and circumstances that are purely geared towards self-interest. You're going to have to learn a practical application of saying, you not run in my life anymore. Um, I was telling my wife last night, I said, you know, I told her, uh, uh, you know, in, in, a, in encounter some things that I was experiencing yesterday, I, what's happening with me is it's become more and more plain for me all of the demonic activity that used to, I used to be oblivious to, okay? Now, I understood it from a real general sense, from a real practical sense that Satan is the God of this world. The entire world system is based upon him and all these things come out of that realm. But the more time I spend with the Holy Ghost, the more time I spend walking with him, being saturated continually by him, the more obvious and glaring and almost even to the point of hearing the voices and seeing the image, if you would, of the influences 
that are working and operating behind the scene. Oh, thank you, Lord, that I just simply obeyed the form of doctrine, your word, and did what you said to do and yielded my members as instruments of righteousness and yielded myself to your joy, and yielded myself to your peace and yielded myself to your love, even when I wasn't able to see, even when I wasn't able to fully understand, because by obeying God, I lived in a place where Satan couldn't access me. But now all the more, I'm like, whoa, if, if everybody's eyes were to be open, I know that the Lord is opening my eyes because he's given me a greater authority over demon spirit and demon power to cast them out and to deal with them both on an individual level, collective level, and a national level because of where the Lord's taking me in the call of God upon my life. And, you know, that's a very important point, dear people. You're only going to be able to function in the anointing based upon the call of God upon your life and your obedience to that call. There was no reason to anoint Joshua if he was going to sit around in the camp and complain. He was anointed by God because he had set himself to serve in the anointing. And I'm just going to stop by way of just a moment and say this. There are a lot of folks that don't get this. They just want to go at their own. They want to do it their own way. They, they still are basically living out a, a culture that we are taught within this framework of America of how, you know, we're in competition and, you know, we're all writing parallel tests and we're all writing parallel reports, you know, and we got to outshine the other person. I'm telling you right now, it doesn't work that way in the kingdom of God. What happens in the kingdom of God is Father, by His own purpose, a Holy Spirit, according to His own will, divides individually giftings. And if you want to function in that gifting, you're going to look at that person who God has, an anoint, has put an anointing on and you're going to hook up with them. And that's what I mean by servitude. I'm not talking about coming over and washing my car and mowing my lawn and changing my light bulbs because that ain't hooking up with no anointing at all. It's rather going and following us and doing what it is we're doing in our participation and service unto God. You're going to first understand that in view of the church service. And I watch how people, because they serve themselves, because they do not know how to deny themselves what they've allowed on their day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month, year-to-year basis of being influenced by other things other than the Holy Ghost, it really begins to the impact them in the context of the church. And so now God is moving by His Spirit. There's the opportunity to to plug right into a realm that will carry you away into a greater ability to function in the anointing, but you're stuck in the prison of self. You Look, you cannot pretend. Religion can pretend. And that's what we, one of the words we use is hypocrisy. It can pretend, but in the light, everything is made manifest. Who you really are, what's really going on in your life is made manifest. And, and so we want you to understand in a very practical way how to deny yourself and and uh, and fundamentally it's really how do you yield to the holy spirit but re- but look here you understand this I, I am a i am a just absolute ardent believer that you first submit yourself to god you resist the devil and he will flee and but at the same time I know that it's important for people because it, it just, it hasn't clicked. I've watched pastoring. I've, watched, I've listened and, and considered in conversations with other pastors and evangelists and ministers, the state that the church is in, the church is stuck. And I don't want you to be stuck. But you're going to have to listen to me. Otherwise, you will be stuck. You're going to have to understand that there is a school here. There are things that we are requiring of you. And I'm not really talking to you like a philosophy teacher tonight. I'm talking to you more like a commander, a general in the army, telling you, you're going to begin defeated unless you'll listen up. It's like, you know, like I posted yesterday. Hey, um, you, the, the, the lust of the flesh is warring against your soul. If you don't know how to fight, you better learn, okay? And because that's the same thing. 
you know, of uh, being out on a battlefield and you just walking around meandering about looking for rocks. Give me a break, man. You're going to get your head shut off kind of thing. Hello, wake up, you know. Kind of, how, hey, listen, you know, the light's shining. Uh, you no know, reason for you to be in darkness anymore. Awake, O thou that sleepest, and Christ shall give you light. And now, in that place, you're going to begin to recognize, wait a minute, I, I've got bad attitudes. I, I walk around in depression. I, I walk around in sorrow. I walk around in sadness. I walk around in complaint. I walk around in murmuring. I walk around being stoic, sedate, emotionless. I mean, the whole gamut of things that go on in people's life. Because I'm telling you right now, you, you're going to have, your praise is going to be activated in you. Thanksgiving is going to be activated in you. Joy is going to be activated in you. When you are walking in the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, He's a very happy person. He's full of love. He's full of peace. He's not, a sa he's not sad. He'll wipe away the tears. He'll remove off the sorrow. He'll fill you with joy unspeakable. If there's anything that is repeated over and again in the Bible, is about you and I rejoicing, you and I having an ecstatic joy, you and I walking in a place with God to where that the very countenance of our life looks like something that every everybody else would want to participate with. And, and, and so we're going to have, you're going to have to decide whether or not you want to participate with this program or whether you want it your way because there are too many people want to serve God on their own terms. And I'm going to tell you right now, all you're going to do is mess around, hurt yourself, and, and, and not be a witness. Uh, you know, you're going to hurt yourself because ultimately you're going, to, uh, you're going to find yourself in a ditch of religion now or later and you're going to get stuck. So I want, you, I want to make sure that you understand this gospel of the kingdom, this one that was delivered to us by the Lord Jesus Christ, this glory from heaven, this fire of God that is burning and is supposed to be burning in our life every day, which really is the same impact and same effect of, and of us being able to worship God and Father being able to receive from us those things that we do offer Him as much as if we were bringing a lamb or a goat or a bull or anything else putting on the altar until it's turned into fire and the fire of God lights it up. It has absolutely no part of worship. It's not part of the sacrifice. It was just simply set there. And before long, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to stink really, very, very bad. You don't want to be in the same room with that sacrifice that's laid there for too long. It's going to, you're going to be running out the door, okay? So we don't want our offering to stink. You hear me? We want our offering. Are you listening to me? Amen. You want your offering to be turned into fire. So I know that people got to deal with demonic power. And uh, that's the first thing. And so I, I address, there are things that are going on in people's lives that they have, that they carouse with, that they have an affinity to, they have an attraction to, they, 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 uh, per, they, they submit themselves to, and it has a demonic stronghold. And, and I mentioned it the other night. I mean, there are things that uh, have their roots in demon worship. And now you're submitting yourself to it and, and you're participating with it. People, it's going to be a stronghold. It's going to have an impact in your life. And, and I can go, I can, you know, um, look, I'm going to tell you right now, this, this person they call like, uh, I think her name is Lady Gaga or something like that. This person is a witch. There's no question about it. The, the, I, I see witches. I see sorcerers. I see people steeped in demon worship. And out of that worship, they are producing this music. They're producing these movies. They're producing these sounds. And people are, 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 are enjoying it. They're being entertained by it. I'm going tell you right now, you are imbibing demon spirits as much as if you smoked a joint, had some mescaline, did whatever else has been used in, in, in uh, satanic worship for years, drank alcohol, whatever, set in, a, in the middle of a pentagram uh, summonsing demons to come in and possess you, okay? And I can, there are a lot of symbolisms that are, that are a part of witchcraft. There, I, 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 I look at people, I see people wearing frogs around their neck. Look, dear people, whether you know it or not, you're proving to me that there is demonic activity going on. Snakes in their lives. I'm going to tell you right now, that's demonic activity. It's just, a, it's clearly an impact of demonic activity and you're going to have to recognize it. You say, oh, no, they just, no, the, the frogs leave the frogs alone. I like rabbit. I like little frogs. Look, I'm going to tell you right now, it, there are things that are steeped in the symbolism of witchcraft and it's not accidental, people. It has to do with iniquity. It has to do with demonic activity and you're never going to get free until you'll come 
come out from among it and be separate. And if you'll listen to me and you get too close to me, your eyes will be open and you'll recognize things that have been allowed in your life that have been influencing you and they're stronger than your will. You must understand. They're stronger than you will. And you say, well, I want to do these things, but I can't do them. Yeah, you can't do them because you're oppressed by demon spirits. They're stronger than your will. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, you can't go and walk in the school of the spirit when you're oppressed by a demon spirit. My goodness, you can't even be, you, you, they're going to block you out. Okay? It should be obvious that demon spirits can't worship God. Okay? And now you're under the influence of a demon spirit to some level or degree. Huh? And I'm going to tell you right now, joy is an expression of the Holy Ghost and sorrow and sadness is an expression of demon spirits. And, and you need to break things out exactly like they are because that's what it is. At the very best, it is a self realm that is overwhelmed by circumstance. I'm going to say it again. It's the third time I said it. But I'm going to say it stronger each time so then all of a sudden it comes home to roost on, on, in, in your, huh? In your shed. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. So you recognize where I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to stay, keep myself in joy. Uh, hallelujah. Now, uh, the, the, these things of walking in the spirit is first of all, recognize what the Holy Ghost is doing, what he's not doing, separ separating yourself under the things that the Holy Ghost is doing, recognizing that there are things that are around you that Satan uses as a ploy and a strategy to take advantage of you. You're going to have to be sharp. Your eyes are going to have to be open. You cannot be ignorant of Satan's devices. These are fundamental things that you're going to have to get. I mean, if you don't get it, that you're supposed to be under authority, that God hasn't made you an individual person that can make it up and decide what you're going to do on your own, that you really need to be under a divine authority, you're completely messing up. You're not going to walk in the Holy Ghost. You're not going to grow in the things of the Spirit. You've got to understand that Father has a system of, of governorship that he has put in place now in the church and will be in, the, in place in his kingdom forever and forever. We'll always be under authority. Praise God. We'll be under, I love being under the authority of the Holy Ghost. But if you can't be under the authority of the pastor, you can't be under the authority of the Holy Spirit. And if you can't be under the authority of your husband, you can't be under the authority of the Holy Ghost. I can go down the line. I'm going to tell you right now, God even said, Paul got bold in Romans chapter 13, said, I set up, I set up government. So I set up, I set up magistrates and authorities to execute my will. And my do is say, look, look, Paul was in one of the most evil dictatorships of all time. He was living under the, under the rule of the emperor Nero. What a demon possessed person. Huh? But yet he's talking about the authorities that are put into place that we are going to have to recognize God set them up. He set up all uh, authorities. And if you're not willing to submit to authorities, if you want to do it your own way, if you want to have things on your own terms, if you want to call your own shots, you want to believe it like you believe it, you are not going to walk in the Spirit. The Holy Ghost is absolutely consecrated and committed to this governorship and this rulership as God has set it up and He chooses who He wants to anoint and if he wants to anoint a person that you don't like, that's his business. And what you better understand is how to see the anointing rather than personality and submit yourself to what God is doing. Otherwise, on a fundamental basis, in a very practical way, you don't get to walk in the Holy Ghost. No matter how much you say you want to, you're not going to be able to because there are conditions with God. You can find out over and again that in the Bible there is a word that reoccurs more than any single word that you could think of uh, besides this one word. And that word is if. If you do these things, it's a conditional word. God demands that you and I participate with his program. He hasn't left us to imagine what we're supposed to do. He has given to us his word and he expects us to be governed and ruled and live by his word. When Jesus is in the straits of being tempted by the devil for 40 days and it ultimately culminate, culminates into one of the big ones at the end of the 40 days, if Satan said, if you be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. Jesus said, I only live by the word of God alone. 
own. I don't have to think through this. Should I prove it? Should I not prove it? I don't have to wonder what I should do next. I live under a principle. I live under a mandate. I live under a go governorship. I am disciplined where I don't think my own thoughts and go with my own thoughts or go with other suggestions. I live by the word of God alone. I don't allow any other thing to be able to slip in, influence my thoughts, influence my decision making. I live by the word of God alone. Now, the Holy Spirit has come to unveil the word and reveal the word, but mine, but to start off with, it's just right here in black and white, some red, some of you got some other color systems as well, but it's right here in this Bible. The Holy Ghost is going to be doing what this word says to do. He has a divine order. I hear people all the time talking about how God told them. God told them nothing when they're describing something that is outside of God's divine order because he is never going to circumvent his divine order. It ain't ever going to happen. The universe will cease existing. It's easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for his divine order to be in any ways interrupted, circumvented, changed, altered. You can't even alter a, a, a jot or a tittle, a smallest little symbol of, of expressing what that word, trying to pronounce that word, really. Much less the de definition of that word. So you have to decide. You need to decide. You need to get real with God. You need to decide whether you really want to participate with God and do it God's way or whether you want to have it your own way. If you could just make that decision, people, you would go on with your life. Your soul is a, is a trade commodity. You have a soul and it has, it has a, a value. You can trade with it. You could gain the whole world with your soul. <laughs> you can gain a good job and a good education and a good position in society with the trading value of your soul. What will you do with your soul? The Lord Jesus says, what should it uh, profit a man if he gave to the whole world and lose his own soul? Father has called you and I to turn our souls over to him. He went and purchased them at Calvary's cross so that he could have them as his own purchase, personal possession and rule over them, but listen, fleshly lust waging war against your soul. How are you going to be successful in staying in the fire of God? I, I think that people think that somehow that we just do this one time and then it's a done deal. Listen, I'm not going to walk with the Lord today based upon what I did yesterday and tomorrow it will be in a brand new day and I will walk with him based upon my willingness to obey him. Then I will say this, that my obedience today makes me stronger to obey tomorrow. I will also say that my disobedience today runs jeopardy of my soul tomorrow. I'm going to obey God. I'm going to get stronger and stronger. I'm going to go from glory to glory. I'm going to understand that, 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 that there is something far greater in God for me tomorrow than what I've ever experienced. There's something right now at hand prepared great for me at this moment. Should I be willing to listen? Should I be willing to abandon my own ideas, my own precepts, concepts, statutes, judgments? Did you know you had them? Did you know you have your own precepts? And, and, and everybody is convinced that their precepts are God's precepts. Uh, did you know you have your own thoughts? And oh my, everybody's present. God, they're confident. My thoughts are God's thoughts. And, and you know you have your own judgments. And likewise, you're convinced that your judgments are God's judgments. I tell you, the only person that can bring to you and I God's statutes, God's judgments, God's thoughts, God's precepts is God, the Holy Ghost who comes and makes his word real in our lives. Huh? He, yeah, is there revelation? Yeah, but you know what? Oh, the revelation just is based upon the word and revelation is really where you and I discover, wow, that's what the, the word said it. That's what it meant. Now I understand it, okay? Um, let me give you another example real quickly. Uh, you know, the, James said, if any man lack wisdom, let, he a, let him ask. And, and God's going to give it liberally. Uh, 
Did, did you notice you lack wisdom on a daily basis? Huh? Well, I certainly have noticed that I do. So what do I do? I, I, noticing that I lack wisdom, that I need win, w wisdom, I acknowledge God. And I say, Holy Spirit, give me wisdom. Now, I've learned how to have a relationship with Him, to communicate with Him in such a way that when I ask Him, I'm able to receive. Did that happen overnight? No, it did not. I've given myself to the school of the Spirit. I've asked people. People, come, follow me, give yourself to the school of the Spirit. Tonight here, I'm asking you again. I'm asking you, those of you that are sitting here in this room with me right now, for which I'm very thankful because, praise God, there is somebody to talk to here. There's someone to minister to here in this nation that, that would be a possibility of being an intercessor, a possibility of being a, a, a means by which God would bring and work a miracle to heal this nation. Nation. I'm talking to the people on the web right now, talking to people who are watching this on YouTube. God's looking for you to come and be taught of the Holy Spirit. He's come to lead us and guide us to all truth. He's come to reveal the Word of God, make known the Word of God, and bring into remembrance the Word of God. He's come to show us how to do the Word of God. It's impossible to do the Word of God without the Holy Spirit. This is the righteousness which is by faith. It is the equivalent to now living in the Spirit and walking in the Spirit. The righteousness which is by faith caused you and I to be born of the Spirit so that now we could live in the Spirit and walk in the Spirit spirit. The righteousness of the faith ultimately gave us access to have our spirit joined unto the Lord and become one spirit. But understand, there is a crisis going on all the time. It's all the stuff that you learned before the Holy Ghost came and did such a wonderful work in your life. It's all of the influences and the circumstances that do indeed exist, even after that you received a new spirit and a new heart. How are you fundamentally going to engage the inner face that you are up against on a daily basis living in a world that is ruled by a power of darkness that is set on destroying your soul whose craft is great whose deceptive power has taken out far mightier folks than you and I. What are you going to do? You're going to have to be willing to continually be filled with the Spirit. You're going to have to be willing to be continually in that place under His governorship to live in His school. Now, He's going to give you and I an opportunity. He's going to tell us what we should do. And now all, it's going to come down to whether or not we're willing to do it. Now, if we're willing to do it and we acknowledge Him and we ask Him, He empowers us. But it is relational. It's relational. It's not default. Say, it's not default. It's relational. You ask God. I say, I talk to the Papa all the time. I say, Lord, shine the floodlight of heaven upon my life. If there's anything that's in my life that's not supposed to be in my life, I want you to get rid of it. I don't want it. I want you to, go. Father, I ask you for your mercy. Uh, I ask you for your grace. Oh, God, make it so real to me that it won't be in my life. And people, I'm telling you, I'm asking, come follow me. I am this because it was delivered unto me. I got the stuff from God. He put me in this place. He put me in this position. That's why you hear. If you could just listen, if you could, if you if you would allow your ears to be opened up, then all of a sudden you would begin to understand. Wait a minute, there truly is an interactive relationship with a very present God who's here right now. And if I ask Him, and I know that He's there, and I know that He's listening to me, and I'm not going to waver about it, and I'm not going to be double-minded about it, I'm going to know for certain that when I ask, He's going to respond and supply that which I need. I'm going to have whatever. I ask. This is the way it works. Now, that takes some time. You've got to grow. But it's time that, I mean, think about it, dear people. What if all of you are sitting over in the nursery? And that's where you gravitated to. And you said, we're going to go to the meeting tonight. And the first thing you asked, well, is there a nursery? And you want to be over in the nursery, doing the nursery things. You'd be, bad. You'd be messed up. We can't just remain babies. There's three phases of ministry. There really is. There are three phases of ministry and growth. There really is. There's, I write unto you little children because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, young men, because you're strong, the word of God abides in you, and you've overcome the wicked one. <laughs> well, I'm just looking for that. 
I mean, I see people try to skip that and say that they, that they parents. Look, look, you know what? It's, you, you're going to have to grow and mature, and you're going to have to do things God's way to become a parent. <laughs> Hallelujah. God, but, you know, we do praise God that we get to start raising children before we're really, um, you know, qualified. Uh -huh. And everybody who has children recognizes, you know, I'm being raised children, I'm not qualified. <laughs> and I thought, my goodness, you know, I would probably do a pretty good job now. <laughs> Raising Anna. I told Anna on the way over here, I said, looky, look here, I'm not just a parental figure, I'm an active participant. This is Pop over here, listen up, okay? And, <laughs> and, and I think, you know, it's easy for a grandparent, you know, just to be, you know, a figurehead. But, you know, I've got to, I got to, I got to play the game. So I got to be a part of it. I, I got to be right there in the mix because I'm dedicated to seeing her grow and, and mature in the things of God to, and to ultimately fulfill the destiny that is upon her life. I'm, I'm dedicated, I'm equally dedicated to that and you, for you. And where did I get that from? I got that from your heavenly father, our heavenly father, who's so desperate and dedicated to you of ultimately fulfilling all those good things that he has given and made available to you out of the good pleasure of his own will. But you can't do stuff your own way. You have to decide. Who's this, how's it going to go down here? Your way or God's way? Who's going to be in charge? Who's going to call the shots? How much of the rest of your life are you going to decide for yourself what you're going to do? You have to decide that. Huh? For me, I decided I'm not, I'm not living for myself anymore. For me to live is Christ. I'm done. I'm done. I am going to fundamentally learn how to put on Christ Jesus. I'm going to fundamentally learn how to walk in the Spirit and live by the Spirit. I'm going to let God lead me and guide me. If there was anybody who could have called their his own shots, done it his own way, it's Jesus. And Jesus said, I do nothing of myself. I'm here only to do the will of the Father. I'm here to show you how to live the heavenly life. And I'm telling you, it's beautiful. I want to live just like Him. I want to walk like Him. I want to go like Him. I want to do like Him. This is the school of the Spirit. It isn't abstract. Just do what Jesus did. He said, fundamentally, come and learn of me. He says, I'm meek and lowly. Do you want to understand how to walk in the school of the Spirit? Number one, you're going to have to go ahead and embrace meek and lowly. And I don't know how long it's going to take you to even begin to mature and feel meek and lowly, but get with the program. Okay? Say, I want it. Lord, I want this. You don't have to take her anywhere. She's not bothering me. She, oh, she has. Okay, baby. Go ahead, darling. Hallelujah. <laughs> Say layman galana. I'm not so sure about it. I'm not so sure about it, but I'm gonna go with it. Hallelujah. Kita basa karaneya. Ah, meek and lowly. Where am I gonna get that from? Where am I gonna get that from? So if I'm gonna fast and pray, I get meek and lowly. You, you fast and pray till you so thin you gotta jump around in the shower to get wet. <laughs> And you're going to get meek and lowly fasting and praying. I'll tell you what fasting and praying will work on. I will work, start off working. It will work on your will, okay? Because when this food's gnawing at your stomach, okay? <laughs> and you're saying, no, I'm not eating. I'm separated unto the Lord. I mean, somebody set up high watermark for me the other day. They fasted 100 days, okay? I've never heard of anybody tell this person fasted 100 days. And uh, my goodness gracious, I'm just like... <laughs> You know, he's just getting bones when it was all done. And you can fast. I mean, I, Pharisees fast, Haradim fast, Muslims fast, all kinds of folks fast. Fast and do it. There's a lot of Buddhists would be saved. Uh, Buddhists fast, Hindus fast, um, you know, Mormons fast. Uh, we go on and Jehovah's Witness fast. Uh, I think Satanists even fast. I, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, you know. But where's meekness and lowliness come from? It comes from the Holy Ghost comes from the Spirit of the Lord. Now, you don't even get to start with the Spirit of the Lord until you've been born of the Spirit, until you've been born again, until you've given a new nature. When you're given a new nature, now you have the opportunity to learn the nature of God. Once you've been given a new nature, once the Spirit of the Lord now lives on the inside of you and your, your lives have been changed, I, I, don't have the, I don't have the Spirit I had when I was three years old. I got a new spirit. I don't, I'm not, I, don't have the same, I don't have the same spiritual makeup that I had. The Lord gave me a new heart and gave me a new spirit. It's part of the new covenant. So that I now could be taught of God. Okay? Now, you, you've been, one, this wonderful event has happened so that you may have the capacity to now walk in loneliness and meekness. 
So how are you going to do that? Oh, okay. I, I know the verse of scripture. I can quote it, Matthew chapter 11, 28. You know, I quote this verse of scripture, you know, get a star in my crown, whatever. No, no. The, the Lord said that because he wants to see who goes, oh, I, I want that. I want to do that. And then he wants to see who's going to do it out of the arm of flesh and who's going to do it out of their own strength and who's going to be, you know, go off charting their own path or who's going to just listen up and say, no, 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 you can't do it by yourself. That's not the faith. The faith is now that you do it by the Holy Ghost. Have you, those of you who, are, who have begun in the spirit, you're also mature by the same spirit. Huh? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by human ability? Well, that's ridiculous. That ain't the way it works. The faith is being born of the Spirit and filled with the Spirit to walk now in, a, in the divine nature of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Who is both in us and, and, and baptizes us. How many times in the day do you recognize, for example, just giving you some examples here because I want you to really get some quantitative measurements. Do you recognize that the Holy Ghost is in you and that he's around you? How many times in the day? Well, I'm going to tell you why you don't recognize that many times in the day. Because you are consumed with self-interest. Now, it is very difficult for people to recognize themselves. I know that sounds pretty, you know, simple-minded. But unfortunately, that is the state of affairs. It's run that way because Satan is the arch deceiver. He knows how to deceive. He knows your daddy, your granddaddy, great granddaddy, great 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 all the way back to Adam. He knows your entire genetic makeup. Okay, I'm laying out a genetics. I'm laying out a plan for for a proper breeding program that's based upon first to survey a population genetics within that particular species and then a quantitative assessment of where that genetic variance would go to create gen what we call genetic gain. Okay, I can do that with a, just a purely intellectual uh, thinking realm learning from all of those things which men have learned over the years. <laughs> Look, I'm telling you, Satan got this thing down, okay? He knows you inside and out. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your strength. He knows how to tick you off so quickly. He knows how to shut you down. He knows how to jack you up, turn you around. And you're going to have to say, no more. No more. I'm going to hide myself in God. Father's made a way for me to come over here and hide myself in God. I'm going to say, Holy Ghost, I'm desperate now. I'm desperate now. I want, to learn, I want to learn this meekness. What is this meekness? Huh? And what we'll do is we'll start off, we'll get the dictionary out. We'll get the concordance out. Huh? Uh, we'll get the preacher's sermonizing thing out. Huh? We'll get all these various different reference manuals out. Watch meekness. And, and, and we'll get a, we'll, you know, and I did that. I wrote out all the definitions of them. I was serious. I pray that every one of you have all written out the definitions of what meekness is and what lowliness is. And you look at it and you evaluate and you think about it and you contemplate it and, and you try to put it into, try to put it into you know, position in your life and, and, be, and within a 24-hour period, it just all goes belly up. That humility that you had absolutely consecrated yourself to and, and that lowliness all gets just messed up. And then you say, wait, 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 wait a minute. There's got to be a better way. And the Holy Ghost goes, says to us, I, I'm the way. I empower you to do this. You've got to learn to live by me, walk in me, do it through me. I'm here. You've got to let me live. You've got to let me arise. And so then out of this, I learned how to just speak to the spirit of the Lord. I learned how to talk to him. I learned how to hook up with him. That's the beautiful thing of tongues. That's why Satan fights tongues so much. And and, and fights it in so many different ways. He fights it in one way where people believe, ah, you know, it's, I mean, people have even gone to the point of saying it's a demonic expression. I mean, my goodness gracious, I believe, I believe those people's souls are in jeopardy because I believe you can blaspheme the Holy Ghost and you can never repent for that. I don't know how many times you try to repent, you're not going to repent. And there's no forgiveness for you. So uh, I wouldn't be calling what the Holy Ghost does the devil, okay? And, uh, you know, it, and, and, but yet there are whole religious segments to do that. And if you're not careful, if you're not careful, that popular opinion is going to influence you. It's going to intimidate you. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to second guess you. You're going to second guess you. And then you're going to blame it on God. 
And that, because I'm telling you right now, your mind will play more tricks on you than you can imagine. You know that there's scientific manipulation of your, of your neurosystem, of your, your brain that will make you think you've done things and you haven't? Oh, yeah. The, I'm telling you, there's all kinds of ways to, to, to mess up just from, a, just from a purely clinical point of view what you think you know. Huh? All the way to ultimately to a lobotomy. So we're, we're not going to go into that. I'm going to leave that off the side. I just simply have a, a, a lot of practical knowledge and practical application to why you don't want to be going with what you think because you and I don't know anything of ourselves. We really don't got it down. We don't know the truth. Holy Spirit knows the truth. Hallelujah. And He's here and come to lead us and guide us in all truth. And He's not mixing with our truth. We're going to have to learn this thing called lowliness of meekness to get it. We're going to have to find a place to say, I'm going to become a servant. I'm Jesus a foot washing, dying on the cross, laying down his life, servant. And we don't get that. We want to go do signs, wonders, walk on the water, raise the dead. <laughs> but you don't, go get, you don't get to go do signs, wonders, walking on the water, raising the dead until you learn how to be a servant. Tell you learn how to walk in loneliness and humility. Because all you can do is ruin yourself. All, God, God is not going to allow you to, to give, you, give, give you more power to ruin yourself through pride. Huh? You listen to me. Listen to me. Understand what I'm telling you is absolutely the truth. The Lord is going to lay the foundation and it's going to be laid properly. And out of that humility and out of that brokenness, then this glory will be revealed. It isn't going to be revealed out of anything else. <laughs> you know, the Lord's going to show us how to totally depend upon Him, give Him all the credit. Amen. Huh? Yes. Where people fall down at your feet and start kissing on your feet and grabbing a hold of you and calling you their dad. You know how to get them up and say, listen, what you're, experience, what you're experiencing is the anointing. The healing had nothing to do with me. I'm here teaching you about Jesus. And especially when you're among the Hindu people, they have a, they're really quick to turn you into a god. I'm telling you right now. And, and, um, and it's saying got a whole lot more subtle tricks to do the same thing. Well, look, there's lots of reasons. I could go through a lot of reasons why you want to learn how to walk in, in the disposition of lowliness and the disposition of humility. And it is an attitude and it is a feeling and it is a thought and it's a behavior and it's a manner in which you conduct yourself. And it is evident in your demeanor. It is you can't make it up. False humility is easy to spot. I don't need a, I don't need a, um, a good uh, telescope <laughs> on my rifle. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Just a scope. <laughs> or a telescope, if I'm looking at the stars, I need it. These things that the Spirit of the Lord supplies are so real, they're so beautiful, they're, un they're unmistakable. Now, I've made it, I hopefully, as simple as it possibly can be. I've hopefully, I've made it for you to where that you recognize the Word of God says it and then you simply ask the Holy Spirit for it and then you learn how to receive from Him because asking Him and Him hearing and Him willing to do it, that's all immediate, that's instantaneous. So long as you're moving in something that God has given you and we're going to make that the prerequisite, you're moving in the measure of faith that God has given you, you're measure, moving in the, in the new birth. Now you have to learn how to receive from the Lord. The Lord is going to teach us, the Lord teaches us how to talk, speak different, think different, act different. Okay, there, I want you to understand that there is nothing in the realms and the framework of walking in with the Lord that you and I learn to do on our own. He teaches us. It is it's totally interactive. And before I start saying the few things that I want to say about tongues, I want to, I'll, just, I'll just talk about prophecy for a minute in terms of a, a real valid participation. There are, there are people who want to come to the meeting and they want to prophesy. Or, and I, I, I don't know what they want to do with prophecy, but I'm going to say that they come to me and want to prophesy. And everybody should prophesy. You should all prophesy one by one. And it's the first, one, of, one of the first evidence of the new covenant. They, and the Spirit of the Lord uh, comes upon 
Even in the Old Testament, the people of God, and they prophesy in the New Testament, as the prophet Joel said, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters, they shall prophesy. Okay, it does stop there. Of course, it then goes ahead and excels into, into visions and dreams. And, of course, we know what visions and dreams are about. They tell us the state of things as they are now, and it also the Holy Ghost tells us the things that are going to come in the future. And if there's anything you and I want to lay hold of, is we want to lay hold of that excelling to understand what's going on in the future because we live in critical times, first and foremost in the preparation of the church. And secondly, in just being able to announce these things of God um, to the world around us so that they know that the people of God have the spirit of the Lord to know what, by, by, because they know what God knows and what God al alone can know. So if you want to prophesy, you want to speak on, in other words, you want to speak by the spirit of the Lord to the Lord, really. That's what you want to do. Did you know that? Because when, that's, that's part of prophes prophesying. Um, Speaking to the Lord, worshiping Him. That's Psalms are, are, are prophetic, are prophetic uh, utterances. And of course, when you look at tongues in Acts chapter 2, they heard them in their own language, uh, declaring the wonderful works of the Lord. But it's also speaking on His behalf. It's both. It's speaking on His behalf. I'm, gonna, I'm prophesying to you now. I've prophesied. I've been prophesying a bit. I've been teaching a bit. I've been doing a bit of doctrine. I did a little bit of knowledge. Okay. I just kept it really general, okay? Um, and so, you know, the, the, the anointing of the Holy Ghost supplies all of this based upon each individual's need, upon the context of what is important in order to see people get busted out, broken out of their prison, busted out of the strongholds, you know, pulled up out of the ditch. To be able to go ahead and move on with God or just simply, you know, all's good and now just to mature you, to take you to another place of, of receptivity. You know, one of the first places, one of the first positions of receptivity is just no, knowing what I'm supposed to do, right? If you don't know what you're supposed to do, you have no ability even to begin to receive, okay? So the first point of receptivity is I've got the knowledge of God. I know what God wants me to do. This is what He's purposed me to do. And then the second part of it is supply, being supplied with the empowerment. So we say, Lord, strengthen me by your Spirit and in my inner being today so that Christ may dwell in my heart by faith so that I being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the height, the breadth, the length, the depth uh, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge to be filled with all the fullness of God. Do I say that out of quoting? I say that out of relationship. Did I learn that so that I could quote vast, you know, uh, you know, verses of scripture. No, it's my prayer that I pray. It's my consecration. It's what I want. I don't want money. I want Christ to dwell in my heart by faith. I don't want fame. I want to be strengthened by the spirit in the inner man. I don't want all this other stuff. I, I trade my soul for Jesus. He bought me. I give my soul to him. He in 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 and uh and who prasiga la katai ha ha and I can't say that without getting a response from him. You know that an day an akasa taiala. It's his response. It's la mombanda le hefishika taia takes over me. It's not something I'm consciously doing, as it were. It's something but I stare at inspiration like a joy. It's like a laugh that busts out of you. You know. It, 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 it's, it's that which goes, it, it's beyond us. It could be a theologically termed transcendent that's present, okay? It's a living presence of a living God. It's an expression right now that the Holy Ghost is in me, interacting with my emotions. I feel Him in my soul. Hallelujah, as the song goes. That was a revival song. I know my God is real. I feel Him in my soul. And my question to you is, do you feel Him in your soul? Or are you consumed with the world? Your self-interest, do you know how to deny it? Do you know how to say no to the world? Do you know how to say no to yourself? Do you know how to deny it? We, want, we are dedicated to teaching you these things. Thank you. But you've got to follow. You've got to listen. You've got to participate. If you don't participate, if you don't participate, you won't get it. Just do it with us. I mean, if the clap goes down, clap. If the shout goes down, if we're jumping on one foot, jump on one foot with us. Whatever. Say, I'm here to serve the anointing. That's truly serving the anointing. Doing what? Imitating God. To imitate those who are anointed by God. Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Jesus. 
Every dimension of the glory of God that has come into my life is first and foremost because I got to have it more than anything else. And secondly, because when I watched or saw at any moment in time the anointing at work in somebody else's life, I said, I want that too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And, and when you do, when you do, when that is it, and God will test it in your heart and your life, he's going to give you plenty of opportunities. And, you know, my goodness, dear people, we prayed in the whole world of ministry before you on a platform. I mean, I mean, everybody from every expression just about that is a revival expression, the glory of God has walked across the platform of this church over the past 20 years. My, and more than that, I mean, we're not going to stop. <laughs> we're not going to let up. And you have to say, wait a minute, I've got to stop putting God the Holy Ghost on hold on a daily basis. I've got to stop ignoring Him on a daily basis. I've got to start recognizing Him on a daily basis so that I can become skilled in my senses to recognize Him when He's on the platform and standing in front of me and then in recognizing Him, then draw all that which he wants to supply to me from the vessel from which it's now flowing. That's the way God does it. Whether it's flowing out of the hand and healing, flowing out of the mouth and word expression, God fills us up with special giftings of his my manifest glory and power. And, and, and you just stay around us and you'll, you'll know. You'll develop a sensitivity there will be times my hand will go up, and as soon as it does, the power of God just absolutely saturates the atmosphere. I know what's happening. It's something that the Lord has given me. Some of the people, when that, those events aren't there, they are not determined by me. They are determined by the Holy Spirit. On Wednesday night, I just preached until that event happened. And when the event happens, it's the glory of God, manifest glory of God that just goes up to another level. I walk in the manifest glory of God on a daily basis, continually walk in that manifest presence. That, that for some of you, you would understand it as being drunk in the Holy Ghost. Some of you don't understand that. Maybe you've never been touched by God where you've lost the English language or where you've literally been so touched by heaven, it feels like you're dizzy, you know, you're giddy, <laughs> you know, you, you drunk kind of thing. I live in that. I, and, you know, I have a capacity to live in that, talk in that. But when I get into this realm of the church, it goes to another level. Hallelujah. Now it feels like I grow 40 foot tall. And what is there? What's the problem? No problem at all. Huh? What is, what, what devil, who, what sickness, what disease, what nation, what faith rises in us. Why? Because we're participating with the Holy Ghost. You can't just serve yourself, have God the Holy Ghost outside the camp of your heart, your mind, your understanding all day long. Come in, flip him on like a switch. Don't work that way. First of all, you have to say, I'm sorry, Holy Spirit, for the way I've treated you today. Huh? I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to have to get yourself a loving person or relationship with him. I'm sorry, Lord Jesus, I didn't give you any kisses today. And the Lord wants the kisses, and don't you ever forget it. Huh? Simon, I came into your house, and you gave me no kisses. I'm going to give him the kisses. Now, I'm calling out to you, dear people, and talking to you about a simple love relationship. I'm not talking to you about what you're able to do out of your own works, out of your own human effort. I'm talking about how you can learn to let God the Holy Ghost take full mastery of your life and you can live the most abundant life, the glorious life, the life of God that you could possibly ever even imagine. Hallelujah. Said all of this struggle. Oh, I struggled all my lifetime with this beast that is so wild. <laughs> my Uncle Charles wrote that song. Great theologian. Huh? Until Christ Jesus came and tamed this little child. Hallelujah. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Hallelujah. Old things have passed away. I've been born again. More than a conqueror. Huh? Hallelujah. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Yeah. What if you started living that? What if you started living that? 
You know, what if it's all of a sudden it's more than a song we sing, it's a life we live. Now, now, Hallelujah. I'm going to sign. I'm going to talk about this here in a minute. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. Yeah. So somebody said, well, what is that? That's holy emotion. That's a holy disposition. That's an attitude adjustment by God, the Holy Ghost. It's a, it's a realm of glory. It's an expression. It's the spirit of the living God being demonstrated on the inside of me and through me. Doing, God doing something in me apart from anything that I could do for myself. He alone has access to the depths of my emotions and your emotions. You can't even access your emotions. Something else rules you. Are you listening to me? And I tell you right now, your spirit man needs to be bigger than your hormones. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The anointing needs to be bigger than your endocrine system. Hallelujah. Ha 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 Amen. Amen. Ah, somebody said, well, you know, it's because it's that whatever. You know, <laughs> it's that season. Now, nah, forget about it. Forget about it. You bigger than that. Ha. Ah, hallelujah. Perukasana mega. And then you, that's the same way. It's the same way that you begin to deal with viruses and sicknesses and diseases and pains and aches. Same thing. It's just maturing. Now I've decided, well, you know what? I'm not going to be sad. I'm going to be happy. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be unthankful. I'm going to be thankful. I'm not going to walk around and complain. I'm going to praise. Now, and, and that, because I'm doing that, I'm submitting myself to the Holy Ghost. I'm letting him do it. I'm saying, Lord, fill me with praise. Fill me with thankful. Fill me with happy. He does it in that relationship. That grows and matures in my life. And then I say, Lord, I'm not going to be sick. I'm not going to be diseased. I'm not going to be tired. I'm not going to be weary. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm not going to serve myself. I'm not going to serve myself. I'm serving the Lord. I don't care. I don't care what my state is. I made my mind up a long time ago. It and my, my children watch this. doesn't matter what my state is. God will be first. I will never prioritize God. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter where I'm at, I will serve God. So that one day I watched my children begin to take and put that into principle where, you know, I watched them at different times uh, get, uh, sit before church. Some of you heard me tell the story and they said, well, you just stay home. No, I'm not staying home. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to the meeting. No matter what I feel, it doesn't matter. Well, praise God. You know, parents, you have the responsibility of modeling that. Then they know where to go. Then faith gets built up in them. Now, this thing about your children now walking in faith to where they're 10, 12 years old and they don't burn now. Come on. Come on, because that's been modeled for them. They have authority over the elements, huh? The, it's been modeled for them to be in submission. It's been modeled for them to be under authority. It's been modeled for them to walk in the anointing. It's been modeled for them to expect great signs, wonders, and miracles. Hallelujah. Praise God. So if you want to speak on behalf of God, you're going to have to learn how to speak to Him. If you want to learn how to prophesy, you're going to have to learn how to pray. Now, do you understand that? Do you understand that? If I asked you to come and pray right now, I guarantee you some of you would have a seriously pathetic utterance of prayer to the Father. I'm going to tell you, if I was going to judge on a 1 in 10, if I was sitting there and you were like in the Olympics, you know, doing diving, you know, and I had a panel of people who really know how to pray, and I gave them all cards 1 to 10, and we all held them up, some of you would get ones. Okay, next. huh? Now I want you to strive for getting 10s. I want you to learn how to talk to God excellently. Well, you're going to have to give yourself to doing that. Huh? And now, now I'm going to tell you the spirit of prayer. See, God says, I want you to pray with all prayer and supplication by the Spirit, Amen. by the Holy Ghost, you see. <laughs> That's uh, Ephesians uh, uh, um, 6.18. We know it's praying in, with all prayer and supplication in, in the Spirit. Paul said, what should we do? We'll pray in the Spirit and pray in the understanding also. Man, I have a tongue. I have a, 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 a prayer language. I have a praise language. I have a song language. I have a miracle language. I have a love language. I have a joy language. I have a healing language. I have a casting out devil's language. I got a language that excels. I'm telling you, I'm not making this up. I love, these are diversities of tongues. These are many manifest 
the di dimensions of tongues, of divine power and authority that you feel surging through your being. It's not a mental ascent. It's not some intellectual concept. It is a real genuine empowerment. God empowers. When Samson walked away with the gates of the city or took a jawbone of a donkey and slayed the thousands, he wasn't having a thought, an idea. It was an empowerment that came upon him. And he busted the, the he busted uh, the, the chains that were upon him. The, the, uh, what are the ropes that were upon him? As though they were burnt flies. You know, are you listening to me? An empowerment. And you begin to recognize that power. <laughs> yeah, there's various different dimensions of empowerment and power. You can see a power in the natural, as it were, on a king. A power on a person who knows how to make money and knows how to make wealth that's on them. I'm talking about when they were in the billions of dollars, you know. There's something different about those folks. Huh? Usually, it's the wrong kind of an anointing. Huh? <laughs> There's a power in it, but it's not a, it's not a power after God. It's power after Satan. Uh, I believe God has given to us the ability to be strengthened. That means to be empowered hmm. by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. By the Holy Spirit. Halamastatai. By the Holy Ghost. Say Holy Ghost. Oh, Hallelujah. <laughs> to empower us so that Christ may dwell in our hearts by faith. And this is a faith that is active. This is the faith that caused Noah to build an ark because he was heard God say to do it and did it, although it was something that was completely unseen and unheard of to him. He moved in a realm called faith. That's how Abraham left everything that he had. He moved in a realm called faith. It moving by the word of the Lord, not after the sight of his eye or, or after the understanding of his own mind, but after the realms that God himself is inspiring and speaking and calling us to do even right now. A faith, it's a supernatural power, can move mountains out of the way, can change um, the course of time, can subdue nations. I'm, 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 I'm subduing nations. Hallelujah. You know how you start subduing nations? You start by subduing you. Hallelujah. You subdue you. How do you subdue you? You deny yourself. First thing you got to do is recognize when itself. Well, you've got to simply recognize it's not, you recognize itself because you recognize this isn't what God has for me. And you don't sit there and start blaming God. Oh, God, I thought, no, no, God. No, it's you. You, see, you say to you, you're not going to act like this. You're not going to behave like this. You're not going to think like this. And you begin to cry out, Holy Spirit, strengthen me right now. Lord, I give myself to live for you. I principally, actively engage, involve myself on a daily basis, saying to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, take complete mastery of my life. I want to walk in you. I want to live by you. I don't want to do anything after my own will or after my own thinking. I want your complete mastery and governorship. It be, it's not a, it, it's praying, but it isn't the concept of prayer that I used to have a long time ago that I see a lot of people stuck in. It's a prayer where I'm having a real genuine conversation with someone that I have a relationship with. Hallelujah. And that I aim and mean to, by all means possible, to fully, completely, and totally submit myself to Him to do it His way. Now, temptation comes along. And then we're going to find out just how much I mean it. Hallelujah. And isn't God gracious? And isn't He merciful? Hallelujah. He is. But, but, he, but you are going to have to be determined to say, wait a minute. The lust of the flesh war against my soul. I'm going to learn how to fight. I'm going to learn how to fight successfully. I'm going to learn how to fight by the anointing. I'm going to learn how to say no to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the pride of life. I'm going to learn how to submit myself to God when it looks like that this other thing that Satan creates to be pleasurable and meaningful and valuable to me and it's all a realm of deception comes and begins to harass me. 
I'm going to have enough wisdom. I'm going to say, Holy Ghost, give me wisdom. Wisdom, divine insight. Then if I got divine insight, you know what I could do? I can see the end results of every act. I can understand how to do the right thing so that I can be successful in the future. Wisdom is a wonderful thing. It's divine insight. Oh, and if you just ask, Papa will show you. He'll, he'll, he'll shine the light on the thing. And, and what looked like, you know, what looked like, a, uh, you know, something beautiful and wonderful will turn out to be the ugly hag that it is. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. The ugly skeleton of death. Huh? That slithering, slimy snake that it is. Masakaranase. <laughs> In Jesus' mighty name. Now, I'm running out of time. Now, it always works this way. By the time I'm ready to start talking about what I want to talk about, I've run out of time. But so I'm just going to take a little bit more time. How much time do I have, by the way? I've been really trying to keep this to an hour, and I've gone over by 12 minutes. I've been trying to keep an hour because I just want people to come back. I realize that they're, I realize, listen, I'm, I'm not pointing a finger accusation. You listen, I realize if you're going to go out running with this, you can go out running with Ann. She runs seven miles. You're going to fall off on the first quarter of a mile because she doesn't run flat ground. She runs hills. Okay? And we're not going to say, oh, look at you. You're not serious. You only ran a quarter mile. No, you're not in shape. You serious? You got out there. You pushed it to the limit. You're just about to have a heart attack. Every part of your body was aching. Okay? Well, we wanted to. <laughs> so, so we're going to help build your endurance. That's what I want to do. I want you to just keep coming back. I'll beg you to come. I'll beg you. God begs us. He begs us. He pleads with us. He rises up early. We're stretching forth his hands, crying out to us, saying, come. And we don't want to give him our back. And so I'm going to do what he does. He pleads. He pleads. He lifts up his voice. He cries out. He calls. He says, come. Walk with me. Come. Follow me. I'll show you how to do this. Okay. <laughs> All we have to do is be willing to participate. There's no such thing as a 30-day wonder. <laughs> so I say, oh, take this little pill in 30 days, you're going to lose weight. In 30 days, you're going to be healthy. 30 days, you're going to have a, a brilliant mind. Forget about it. <laughs> Give me your horse for 30 days and it'll never buck again. Forget about it. There's no such thing as 30-day wonders. Just, we're not some, listen to some little sprint to gain some little prize. This is a long distance run and we're running to win the race. I'm running to win. I'm training to win. Everybody's supposed to be training to win. That means you're giving it all. You're putting everything into this. Because it's more valuable to you than anything else. Hallelujah. Athletes, athletes in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I just want to say this, and I, it's very important that you grab a hold of it, you Pentecostals, you people who believe in the pouring out of the first fruits of the Holy Ghost, that God has baptized us in the Holy Ghost, given us a guarantee of our inheritance, and this being the down payment of an unlimited ability to function in miracle signs and wonders in every dimension of the good things of God, both in character and nature and exploits and disposition and demeanor and power and attributes and actions, okay? <laughs> and all of them will grow together. They have to be developed together. Not one developed and then another is developed. They developed together. I want you to understand, tongues in your life needs to always result in prayer that can be, if you, you're going to pray in the Spirit, then you need to also pray with the understanding also. Now, if... You praying in the Holy Ghost, the tongues of fire that came upon the church on the day of Pentecost. If it's an effort of your own strength where you're just like, okay, I need to pray in the Holy Ghost. And it starts off kind of dry shucks, right? <laughs> it sounds like, you know, it's just a little bit above bbb, okay? JK, don't stop there. That's wrong. Don't even, don't stop there. If you're going to stop there, don't start, okay? Because really, I know a better way. A better way is you just start talking to the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, fill me. I don't start, I don't force tongues. Are you with me? I believe in praying as the Holy Ghost gives me utterance. So what I do is I say, Holy Spirit, fill me. 
with the rest of the land, I'm a Gashi Bramig and I'm a Mabala by Galimibi. See, I'm a good arm to get away like a Sabala and I'm a big Shabrat to be a toy. So I get it on the Kadia Takanahida. You know what I was so buying? You know what happened to Sella? I shall look near Kadai. You know what happened to me in that dish? You know what happened to me? I have a relationship. I said the word and he responded. Huh? That's the way it works for me. Should work for you that way too, but it's not going to happen that way overnight. You're going to give yourself to this. Because there's been many times in my life I've said, Holy Ghost, fill me. And then in a masika, then in astai. And I did not have it at the side. I did not have I did not I did not have those results. I didn't have those results. And I and I and I would say, Lord, what did I what have I done wrong? Show me. What, what have I grieved you? Have I hurt you in any way? Lord Jesus, shine the floodlight of heaven upon my soul. Lord, I just take your blood right now. I thank you for your washing. I thank you for your cleansing. And see, it's wonderful to have faith in the blood of Jesus Christ because then you know when you pray that prayer that everything's taken care of. There is a problem. Okay? I just want to know why the flow isn't there. Huh? I, okay, I wake up every morning and when my feet hit the ground, my foot hits the ground. How many times even before my foot hits the ground? is there by the utterance of the Holy Ghost, not a religious ritual that I have. Now, I gave myself to that. It's the school of the Spirit. I'm telling you about me because I'm asking you to imitate me. Oh, my. I'm asking you to imitate me. I'm trying to get this real practical for you. You are here not by accident, but by divine appointment. It's time then you go ahead and hook up with the anointing that God has placed in your life. The gift that God has placed in your life for your perfection. I don't need my lawn cut. They, the landlord pays for that. Okay, I don't need anybody to do my work. I like to work. I enjoy working hard. Okay, and it's it, 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 and people can come and join me, but I don't need anybody doing my work. I'm not talking about all of that nonsense. Come be my slave. I'm talking about you hooking up with where I'm going in the gifting that God has placed within my life, the anointing that God has placed in my life. I want to see, as Deborah said, every one of you, I look at it, every one of you as missionaries, and there's a gifting of a prophetess upon her life. There's a gifting of a powerful, wonderful work of intercession that has been manifested in her life for years. She's been around a long time and I just am so blessed by that hearing those kinds of things those witnesses that I already know uh, 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 these things about you but I, I you have to understand I also know as your pastor where your problems are okay I know what you're not doing that you're supposed to be doing and you're gonna have to get yourself into a place to where that you voluntarily say no 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 I want to participate with this program yeah. Okay, so when you begin, this the best thing for you to do is this. Say, Holy Spirit, if, if, that, if that flow's not there, as I said, Holy Spirit, come and fill me. Uh, okay? And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and Okay, if it doesn't, just go in and talk to him. Tell him, Baba, that you love him. Tell the Lord Jesus how much you love him. Tell the Holy Spirit how much you love him, that you want to serve them. You want to do those things that they purpose for you to do, that you're committed to being governed and ruled and by the Holy Ghost, that you want to put on Christ. That's the life that you want to live. I mean, just talk to Father like that. Talk to Father. Not a, don't ask a miss. Don't ask a fantasy, things out of your own lust, out of your own desire, out of your own framework of thinking. But, ever, but ask those wonderful and glorious things that God has described to us in His Word. Those are the most important things. Lord, I want to put on Christ. Lord, I want you to do, Jesus, I want you to dwell in my heart by faith. You start talking to the Lord like this. You begin to just praise Him. Thank Him for everything. Thank Him for the ground that you're walking on. You know, thank Him for the flowers. Thank Him, you know, just, you know, just... 
walk out. I mean, I walk outside with Anna a little when, when they got here and I said, oh, look at the beautiful ground the Lord made and look at the beautiful sky the Lord made and look at the beautiful trees that the Lord made. And, and just acknowledging the Lord, you're going to feel the anointing of his presence. Now we should come very easily when you say, Lord, fill me with your spirit right now. Let your anointing flow out of me right now. Then you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Now that's the Balmarastea. It's now not you doing it. It's God the Holy Ghost doing it through you. Now you stay with that until your disposition changes, till the atmosphere changes. If you don't, there's something wrong with that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't play games with God. Don't play no Pentecostal games with God. Okay? But Papa's not impressed for you just, you know, doing something little, some little religious exercise. The only reason that you're allowed, you and I are allowed such a precious gift is for us to be able to hook up with what the Holy Ghost is doing. That is real. It can be felt. It's felt in your attitudes. It's felt in your disposition. It's felt in every dimension of your life. I can just pray in the understanding and touch that realm. Okay? I watched, I've watched and had preachers, ministers that I've known who weren't baptized in the Holy Ghost but could pray into that realm, pray into that glory realm, okay? Now, the, the, what all God's done with this wonderful baptism of empowerment that He's given to us is He's given to us a greater, as it were, ability to hook up with Him, a, a, a far more profound effect, an access that is not even to be compared with anything else that has ever happened in biblical days. So you pray till the joy comes. You pray till the peace comes. You pray till the glory comes. You pray to that realm of heaven touches your soul. You pray until it then works out in you a prayer with the understanding also. Okay? Yes. Now you are, you are now in the school of the prophets. You are now giving yourself to prophecy. If you want, those who, want to pro, those who, who, who uh, prophesy, which should be everybody, you should may all prophesy one by one, Wait on your prophecy. How do you wait on prophecy? You sit around and just meditate? <laughs> no. You give yourself to prayer. You give yourself to prayer. You give yourself to talking to the Father. And yeah, it is true also, the reading of the Word, waiting upon the Word of the Lord, but that ultimately impacts prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, doctrine, every dimension of our life and moving in God is strengthened by the the Word of God. We learn how to speak the Word of God. And, and how, how do you give yourself to prayer? How do you give yourself to prayer, fundamentally? There is not a single person, every, listen, can I help you? Every problem you have, every sickness you have, every disease you have, every hurt you have, every issue you have, is your own making and your own keeping. Okay? You can decide you're going to move on from it, or you're going to just decide you're going to live in it. People, you ever heard a person tell you a story about how somebody hurt them or abused them and it sounded like it just happened yesterday? Huh? Right? Just so fresh. Wow. Just happened yesterday at most last week. And then when you dig in there, you find out it happened 30 years ago. Huh? Everybody else has completely forgotten about it, but they've lived in it every day. They are the personification of that event and that problem. It's going to work sickness and all kinds of sorrow and problems. Look, well, let's have the opposite of that. Let's get over here into a realm of participating with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, let's go ahead and believe what God has to say. Amen. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Somebody said, oh, I'm not pleasing God. Yeah, you probably aren't. <laughs> well, and, and, and Father can change that for you right now if you would like it. Or though you can continue going on. I, I, I don't think I'm pleasing God. It's a choice. It's a choice that we make. Papa's not going to come down and make us do anything. He's given everybody the right to choose. You have the right to choose. There are times I, I would have rather... Say, Lord, I don't want to have the right to choose. But the Lord said, no, 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 no. I want from you those things that you want to give me because you choose to do it. But Lord, the choices are overwhelming. The, the, the influence is overwhelming. I don't know, God, within the framework of my own will that I'm going to choose right. And Papa says, I'm here to help you and teach you. Now learn. We want, to, we want to have some kind of escape. We want to blame it on someone else. I'll tell you, listen to me. I will not have anybody 
standing with me. My great-grandfather was a powerful, wonderful man of God, a Holy Ghost man of God. He won't stand with me. My dad has spent his life in ministries, faithfully serving the Lord. He won't stand with me. My mama was in one of the greatest churches, Pentecostal churches in the 30s, 40s, she, in, the, in the earth. She won't be standing with me. I'll be standing all by myself. You'll be standing all by yourself, giving an account. You won't be able to blame it on anyone. You won't be able to credit anyone for it. Then you're not going to have a special position because you got, you know, you got, I got a long lineage of pastors and, does, and, and preachers and ministers in my family. That mean nothing. That mean nothing. I'm no different from the person who has a long lineage of murderers in their family when it comes to that perspective that there is no extra points, exemptions, or justifiable reasons for you to do things other than what God said. Me, you, nobody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want you to step in a school of spirit. Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, my Papa don't have no grandchildren. How did you know that? Yes. He only has children. <laughs> Ain't no second generation removed from God. Hallelujah. You want to be a child of God? Do you want? How, how valuable you think it is to be a child of God? Uh, for me, it is the most valuable thing that exists. For me, it's all I want. That you have to answer that question for yourself. Is it all you want? You want to be a child of God and be your own person too? You want to be a child of God and a child of man as well? What, what all do you want? You want to have heaven and earth as well uh, too? Do you want to have, you know, a whole list of things along with Jesus? You have to decide because I'm telling you, God is calling us to a place where we no longer live, only Christ Jesus lives. We want nothing but Him. The most important thing to us is the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Said, the single desire of a heart is better said. When we say seek first the kingdom of God, the most important thing to us, the single desire of a heart, is the kingdom of God. Amen. The working... Demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Shiro Tai Mikata Ki Kanas Tai Dile Puatara Sanapakan Este Paranete Ishibaki Ingala Tot Malasate Set Bertai. That's how easy it is to receive. Silent kind of ningalai, soul of Mombrataya, hasta paranea pai. Now just give yourself to this realm. You're not going to sound like 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 When I get in the car and I'm on my way to church and it's going to take me 30 to 45 minutes to get to church. I get in the car and I immediately start praying in the Holy Ghost. And I'm waiting on my ministry because I'm praying in the Holy Ghost because I know it's going to excel into the Holy Spirit speaking through me. He's training me to speak by Him. I, I know it's going to excel into the Holy Spirit being able now because I'm hooking up with Him in another dimension to do the different things that he's going to want me to do to have power over the hindrances and the situations that I'm going to confront when I get to the church. I also do it if I'm going to someone's house, going to work, going to a place of business because it doesn't matter. I, I want to be, I, I don't want to be seen. I don't want to do it after my own thinking, after my own manner, after my own understanding. I have been given a gift. And it's a gift to hook up with the Holy Ghost. It's a gift to come under His divine power and influence. Now, for me, because I've given myself this gift, within, inside of 10 minutes, the atmosphere will be changed in my life. I will, I will be able to tangibly say to you, I recognize the Holy Ghost right here with me, around me, and I feel and experience Him working on the inside of me. Was it that way in the beginning? 
when I first started walking with the Lord. No, it was not. There were seasons of that. But nonetheless, I gave myself to having it continually. I can tell you there's things right now that I don't have on a continual basis. I'm pressing in to have it. Ten years from now, I'll be able to tell you I have that on a continual basis. Different dimensions of the things of God that we know are available to us. Okay? You decide, what do you want? I want you to make that decision tonight. I want you to decide whether you're going to be in the team of being those who are hid in Christ Jesus or those who walk around half and half. Huh? Huh? Half self, half religious. Half and half. Half self, half religious. Thinking about one day maybe serving God. Because I'm, when I say talk about serving God, I'm talking about serving God God's way. Serving God God's way is living by and walking by and being mastered by, being continually under the power and authority of the Holy Ghost. That's serving God God's way. You have to make up your mind. Do you want that? Because if you want that, Father is dedicated to you and I having that. But it's a decision of our own will. And I'm telling you right now, you're going to have to get a made up mind about this. This makes the difference of how you're going to progress in the school of the Spirit of whether or not God gives you a diploma out of this. He'll give you a certificate. He'll certify you. He'll certify you. He'll certify you with signs and wonders, with growth and maturity. That'd be better than any plaque you can hang on your wall. And better be any better than any diploma. Hallelujah. Whew. I want you to get real with this, people. I want you to get real with this. And as you do, what's going to happen? Self is going to stick out to you. You're going to go, my goodness, I had no idea. I spent so much time doing self and enjoying it. Or at least thought I was enjoying it. Really wondering why I was having such a bad time while I was enjoying it. Why I had so much trouble. Why I had so much trouble and wondering why I couldn't move on with God. I, didn't re I never recognized. You know what a great breakthrough is? Can I tell you this one breakthrough? Great breakthrough. When a person comes to me and says to me, Pastor, can you tell me in a very practical way what does it mean and what does it look like for me to deny myself? We have just had a moment. <laughs> we just had a moment of truth. In my time of pastoring and ministry, I've had two people say that to me. Two in over 30 years. Two people. I don't know where everybody else got their information. <laughs> but the actual doing of it is rare. So what does it take for you to get to the place where you get real with God? Where you start asking real questions? If you had a math problem you couldn't solve, who are you going to ask? Who are you going to go to with that? Are you just going to keep that? Just hold on to it? When you've got all around you, you've got experts in that. And I could say with the with, I could say mechanics, I could say plumbing, I could say whatever your craft or trade is. If you've got a problem, and now today, if you've got something you don't understand, what do you do? You Google it. <laughs> you don't imagine it. You don't send in for a, the new edition of Encyclopedia Britannica. That's obsolete. Why do you need that? You go, to, you, go to, you go to someone who knows. When did you go to the Holy Ghost and ask him? Well, I, 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 I do that. But see, but you understand fundamentally, the Holy Spirit has put people in his position, in his place, to represent him as mouthpiece, as instruments to speak through. It's called the ministry. <laughs> it was once reverent, feared, it is now since a great rebellion and, and an advancement of the apostasy that we are fast pressing towards been almost completely ob ob obliviated and removed. And there, you, but you've got to decide what you're going to do. Are you going to be under the influence of the spirit of this world? Are you going to be under the influence of things that have changed the culture and mindset of how men interact with God? Are you going to just do it the way that it's supposed to be done. Are you going to recognize and honor 
the things that God has placed in position in your life. Are you going to value the anointing? Are you going to value the working power of the Holy Ghost? Everybody, you get to decide that. And if it takes you 50 years to say yes, God gives you 50 years. You don't have much time to do anything with the final submission because by that time, you know, let's say you started doing 20 years, 70, you mean you got a few years. And who knows? I mean, I, I, somebody said, well, Mo started his ministry when he was 80. Not really. Not really. He stepped into his, his, the greatness of his ministry and his purpose when he was 80, but he understood as a young man what God would do with him. He started his ministry early on in life. Are you with me? Yes. It, it'd, be, it'd be probably not likely. Uh, you know, uh, one of my professors came to me and he said, look, you know, all these people that think that they're going to do some brilliant invention and get the Nobel Prize, look, if you haven't done it by the time you're 28 years old, forget about it. And, you know, that was kind of, you know, that's kind of hurtful to an audience who's got great ambitions, you know, because, like, you're not too far from that. But you know what? He was really speaking out of a lot of wisdom, right, and insight. Just come on, come on, let's be sober about this, guys. Come on now. Get with your job. Get focused and be happy that you're allowed to be a player. Quit thinking about getting a Nobel Prize, <laughs> right? Because you just weren't born with that, those goods. The reality of it is his father's given us an opportunity to be just like him. What are you going to do with that? We don't have to say, well, if we haven't gotten it by a certain time, we're not going to have it. He's there every day. He stands at the door and he knocks. He knocks. He compels us. He said, I want you to come follow me. I want you to come go with me to my father's house. I want you to come live with me in this room. If you'll open up, he come in and fellowship with you and you with him. No one's exempt. Saddam Hussein was not exempt. Whoever you can think of as a, as a terrible, bad person, they're not exempt. You're not, no one's exempt. God's invited everyone. He's made a way for everyone. Many are called, but few are chosen because few respond. I pray that every person in this place tonight, you'll respond. You'll, you, and in responding, you come to discover that the opportunity that's been made available to you goes way beyond what you ever even imagined. You do not have the mental capacity to even imagine what God has made available to you. What you do is one step of obedience at a time, you get to walk into it. And the revelation begins to happen. And the revelation is simply that event that takes place as you walk with Him and behold Him. There is no revelation outside of beholding Him. All revelation is about Him beholding Him, going, wow, this... This is what you invited me to do. <laughs> this, is what, this is what you've given to me. And all I had to do is just simply say no to self and sin. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord all of you just received it right now from heaven. Just yes. be full of joy right now. Everybody. <laughs> and you say, just say, say, Lord, fill me up with joy. Lord, fill me up with joy. Okay, now do it. That's your joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See how I'm doing joy? See how I'm doing joy? I'm praising Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to show you how to do this. Hallelujah. I don't just sit there. Pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you. We got it. Thank you for all the good things. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen, think about whatever makes you happy. Does a good grade on a test make you happy? Is that what makes you happy? Just think about being a good grade on a test. 
and give the Lord the credit for it, and you get happy right there. You won't have to go, I'm trying to be happy. Think about what the good things God has done for you. Yeah, yeah, that's the starting place. Then it will ultimately develop and mature into, a, <laughs> into just being happy in His presence. I'm just happy about His presence. I mean, what makes me happier than anything else is His presence and knowing that He's here with me and that He loves me. But that takes a while to grow into that. I understand that. That's real stuff. And we, li we live in a different kind of world than real. But Baba's devoted. See, the Holy Spirit has come to lead us and to guide us into all that is real. Yeah, all that is true. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that means he's going to show us Jesus. He's going to show us the things of God. He's going to show us the things of Father. He's going to show us the things that last forever. And when you see any part of that, you are hysterical. <laughs> you are hysterical and happy because he's made it all yours. He's, he's secured your place in him. He's preserved you unto that day. He, he, he's reserved for you a spot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. We all find a bunch of people, hug them, tell them they love them. Remember, if you're going to have things in God, you've got to participate with it. If you want a greater manifestation of love, then participate with the love.